Illumination always gives us a minion logo, but Stuart in a go-kart? Super Mario Kart Brothers style opening credits. Ah, uh, see, you can't start revving that early, Stuart. Classic mistake. Speaking of classic, OG sprites and MIDI song in the Nintendo logo. Three wins for the production company logos. What have we become? Oh right, logos are cool. And now the airship theme getting the full orchestral reinvention? Something this movie does really well is make Bowser a force, and when their car is bigger than your house... <laughs> Flying spiky blue Koopa Trooper is the battle leader. Checks out, blue shells are the worst. Or the best, depending if you have them. Bowser knows a thing or two about presentation, eh? Badass bad guy right off the bat. Attack! First needle drop of many to let the parents know it's gonna be okay. In this case, Battle Without Honor or Humanity, which is either from New Battles Without Honor and Humanity if you're cultured, or Kill Bill if you're even more cultured. Win-win. What? I patch Koopa was faking? It's like a deception win. Kinda makes you think. Mario always struggles in the frozen world, slipping around and such. Now if only he and Bowser teamed up. Just saying, could be a fun game. It's me, the Mario and the Luigi. Racist accents, ah, but that's not a win. Okay, they're Italian, so it's... Okay, but Charlie and Chris aren't. Huh, interesting, moving along. And just a wall of Punch-Out Easter eggs in the Punch-Out Pizzeria. Glass Joe looking a lot more confident than usual, Bear Hugger as creepy as ever, Doc over there next to Sandman, Piston Honda fighting bald bull, Von Kaiser knocking out Don Flamenco, I think? Also the Duck Hunt Duck and Little Max squaring off with Glass Joe. What about the accents? Is it, is it too much? Too much? It's a perfect! Wahoo! Well, I guess you can trust the OG Mario voice actor, Charles Martinet? He's not Italian either. Huh, next! That is cinema! Wins, you're hired. It's a me! Okay, see now Spike is being deliberately racist, which makes him a good bad guy, so we're still winning racism. Huh, pushing forward. So bold! <laughs> no one said mic drops didn't have a cost. I kind of feel like the GameCube theme song is a deep cut unless you're in your mid-twenties, but what do I know? Spike was the bad guy in the Mario game Wrecking Crew, and we all knew that. I kind of like that Mario's platformer skills aren't a result of Peach's teaching. That's a real-world skill he already has, and when the Beastie Boys sing about your city, you're unstoppable. Also teamwork. And he beats 1-1 with no power-ups. He even goes above the frame, which usually leads to a warp, but flagpole sound effects and all. And I mean, it's truly 1-1. Goodness, Tetris block painting, that's what the floors are made of in Super Mario Bros. 3 underground levels, and everything is just cubes. Also, you can hear the Super Mario Bros. 3 World 1 theme playing slowly. The drip is right upstairs at the end of the hall. <laughs> Scariest villain in the entire movie is Francis with his nose pressed up against the glass. Hey, shielding Bowser breath shadowing. The world laughed at Da Vinci, too. I'm not sure they did, Ma. Da Vinci? Sure they did. Look, lots of NES game references. I mean, he's playing Kid Icarus, but Kung Fu was my childhood. And you know we had the power pad for track and field, but really for athletic world. That's the one with the river and the raft, and you have to jump over the logs and stuff. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm young, just like you. Sick and tired of feeling so small. Better stop hating mushrooms, then. Good lesson for the kiddos. Veggies good give you superpowers. Although there are some advantages to being small. Huh, Mario's head was bigger than I realized. Level 1-2, because they're going underground, even got the right theme music. Hints that we definitely don't need to worry about how Rainbow Road will look if it happens to come up. Worlds between worlds are always so beautiful. Heck yes, orchestral Mario theme I've had in my head for literal weeks since watching this with Jude and the correct green pipe sound. Hello. Politeness. And then the Mario 64 theme, which hits us with a different kind of nostalgia, a different flavor, if you will. Credit for making Dry Bones scary in a classic zombie way, but still somehow cute, like maybe he'd still be a fun pet? Worst ATM design ever. Or is this their job? Like slavery with extra steps? What a sweetie, already loving our tiny little plumber guy. You just have to blow into it. Yeah, just make sure your mouth is dry, which was really easy for eight-year-olds. What, does Futurama have the sole rights to clear glass transportation tube jokes? Of course they do, so we'll call this a reference. A princess, though, is in another castle. Wait, you're saying they were lying? Every time I beat a level, they were lying to me? <laughs> their custom helmets still barely fit their giant domes. CQC Peach, or my Smash Bros. Peach mains. He will eat you for breakfast. He won't even notice it, probably, because you're very... Very small. She hasn't even gotten her fire flower power yet and still got that sick burn. 
seems fair to say badass good girl. Pretty epic moves. It's fun to see her be a total badass and not just in another castle all passively. She even does her dress float down thing to the actual level complete theme. We are not straying here. Now for a classic 80s training montage set to none other than the song that made Kevin Bacon a hero while playing Tractor Chicken. Sounds like one of those an AI wrote this sentence things, but it's real life. Also, a training montage is the fastest way to genuinely capture the feeling of playing the game. I know there's usually a joke here, but like the way he gets one step further each time, but the next hurdle gets him, that's gaming, baby. Also, puking absolutely is a way to lose a power up. Good note there. And there is an undeniable sense of satisfaction seeing a guy you've been controlling in various bit numbers for the last 40 years do all the coolest stuff you've ever done with him in full cinematic glory, sometimes even better. <laughs> was... was the bob panting? Like he was afraid to explode? Did this movie just get ultra dark or the bob sentient? Huh. Sex bob <laughs> Comex little dance. Whatever those things are! They're Koopas, you racist! Crap, there it is again. But they're spinies, which are just quadruped Koopas. Get it together. The most powerful turtle in the world! Are you sure you're not a dinosaur? I heard T-Rex from a pretty reputable source who held his hands like a T-Rex. Talk about a glow up. Ah, fair, fair. Well, what if she says no? Then I will power up with this star and destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! And see, like, we made the joke that biologically it would work in the 93 movie, and now it's just confusing? His level-headedness is still on point, though. It's gonna rock! School of Rock, sorry. Jack Black is great, here he is playing the saxophone. Nervous? Who, me? <laughs> yes, a little. Honesty. Always sucked at the bob Cannon canon minigames. Like, really sucked. Happy to not be shown up here. And I enjoy this little tour through the world so we know there's more out there even if we don't have the time to spend in each this movie. And obviously a travel montage is the fastest way to get Bowser his Jack Black Thanos moment on a custom piano? Yeah, okay, that's awesome. Giving the staple power up its own little moment that's both visually gorgeous while still honoring our nostalgia, even changing her into her correct dress colors. <laughs> Carefully don't warp somewhere by accident. Man, Luigi always gets the raw end of the deal. Mario's off canoodling near some flammable flora while Luigi is getting an uninvited mustache groom. My brother Mario, and he's the best guy in the world! But what a brother! Compliments when his bro isn't even there to hear them. When he watches me kill his brother! Hey, uh, Bowser, you wanna chill a little? Like, shoot some fireballs, maybe a little light kidnapping, but why don't we keep the murder on the DL? There are kids here, yeah. No, cool, cool, going for night terrors, fair, that's fair. Is that Goomba from Giant Land? Wonder what he did to what the blazes is that little demon? Oh, it's just the Lumily. Wonder what it was trying to sell. Follow me. <laughs> Voices not matching visuals always works for me. Even if it's a little AI voice that does all those movie recaps. <laughs> Another needle drop, this time making sure we didn't miss Miami Vice Kong's vibe. We didn't. Still such a polite little dude. We have heart. In our hair. <laughs> I know Donkey Kong rap has been around since Donkey Kong 64, but the Run DMC vibes are way heavier in HD. That means you, Diddy Kong! D Diddy, obviously, but Dixie and Chunky showed up for this too? I love that his hat falls off and then he lands in it on the tumble to go back on. Is this what you came for? Yeah, we're not not entertained. Yeah! <laughs> The camera zooms in on his hand ever so slightly so it seems like he's about to get big, but if you heard the power-up noise, you know what happened. Jude's favorite scene right there. Not sure what it says about him, and I'm not too worried about it. Probably time for Donkey Kong Country. DK going old school, which checks out since the entire arena is the OG Donkey Kong. Blue ladders and everything. It's a me. <laughs> okay, that was a smart way to get him to say it. I don't think you can do that in Smash Bros, but who am I to judge the mod? Ah, uh, mercy and saving your new best friend. Pick your cards! Jude and I started playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and if you know how many times I had to say those words. A. Hit A. Hit A! Love really makes a guy come out of his shell. Again, maybe a turtle crossed with a dinosaur? Just the most messed up turtle. I get why he's so angry. He has defeated Donkey Kong and won the Kong army. I mean, you make it sound way more remarkable than it actually was, but truthfully, Mario is the short king, so it plays. 
Peach's racing suit matches her bike, and even if it's game accurate, it's a very on character. Wish I could coordinate that well. That doesn't seem like a regulation cart. Again, not regulation, but there's definitely a sense of safety during this Mario Kart sequence, so I like that his car can actually be blown up, and he's in actual danger. It's animation, so the long take doesn't count. Cool, it still looks amazing, especially the spin around Peach right at the end. <laughs> yeah, my man is picking it up fast. And I know it's kind of old hat at this point in the movie, but the accurate sound effects are really pleasing to the ear. <laughs> friendship, almost friendship. Like I said, blue shells are just way too OP unless I have them, in which case they're perfectly fair. Also really, really into the way they got us to be able to experience Rainbow Road at night. When they're approaching the jump, you can see the sun setting, casting stark shadows on the rocks around them. And then when they get up there, it's still intensely bright. Once the Koopas start chasing them, it's dusk. The Koopas all turn their lights on and it gets darker and darker throughout the ride until it's nighttime and the road has a magnificent glow to it. They really nailed Rainbow Road. You're the one Stop who- Stop talking! I don't want the last thing I hear before I die to be your- You've got to admire DK's commitment to his hatred for Mario even when approaching death. Ah, the Mare. Unagi, if you prefer. Can't be beaten, love to see it. I said I wouldn't let anyone hurt you. Toad, my little fun guy. <laughs> Gotta give her some props for standing down a giant airship. Just the way she picks up the halberd. Badass good girl. Peaches. Not that he needs anything to make him creepier, but Bowser is the only one in the world that calls her Peaches. Classic Sigma male stuff. Finally. Mercy. <laughs> Optimism. Who smashes thing? It's true, he collects stuff too. So much stuff. Donkey Kong Country, Rocket Barrel Escape. Mario is even close to Diddy's size. <laughs> is is that blood dripping down the cake? Wow, they really got it all in there, didn't they? And I love that it's not just the usual cast of characters, it's King Boo and King Bob Om, because of course they'd show up for King Koopa. Even on her wedding day, she wears pink. I'd like to know the actual etiquette here, because did she even need to hide the ice flower? It's a flower, what if she wants magical flowers for her bouquet? <laughs> now we're talking. What was I saying about the satisfaction? 1-1 music, power-ups, ground pound, even his little arms outrun. We won't tell anyone that you can't stomp a piranha plant. This is fun! Agreed! <laughs> Look, I get why they skipped over the Super Leap and Raccoon Mario, but if you're gonna do that, where's the statue? And if it's about flying, what about a P-Wing? I'm just name dropping stuff. This is awesome and I'm happy about it and also he's a cute Tanuki. Also, Super Mario Bros. 3 1-2 music? I'd wanna say this isn't how lava works, but it absolutely is how lava works in Mario games, so we're good. As long as we're together, everything is gonna be okay. Saving your brother. Mario, why do you look like a bear? What is this? <laughs> Astute observations. <laughs> And he's polite to the last. Is this a reference to the 93 movie? They land in a construction site by the Brooklyn Bridge too. I don't know what it is, but the peril in this movie is always next level. Just listen to the bad guys growl. I mean, seriously, Bowser is an actual beast. You just don't know when to quit. Yeah, I've been told that before. <laughs> and he learned to take it as a compliment. Thanks, Peach. Sign her up for Arsenal. You know, because of the pink kit. Invincible boys, with the star theme playing and everything. I call that a sing moment. This sing. They just did a punch-out star punch in front of the punch-out pizzeria. And I love that they mix the classic Invincible star music with a more upbeat, triumphant piece. Yep. Funniest thing about the star is that Bowser thought it was the answer to all his problems and it seems to work just like in the games. It lasts for 30 seconds and then it's gone. Works on fire breath though, so now I'm knocking it. Oh, bring it in! Hugging. Jude's second favorite scene really likes the doggo's approval. Hey, DK did his peck dance just like he said he would. All that's left is you and the infinite void. Yeah, but sometimes that's a good thing. I think the Lumalee is misunderstood. More optimism. Aw, that was sweet. They gave him a tiny piano or... Shrank a piano? Either way, very considerate. Yahoo! Yes. As far as adaptations go, this is one. No, I'm kidding. This is a stellar one. The visuals and sound effects, even the lore and the explanations of power-ups, it all honors the games very well. Often sticking to the source material isn't the goal for film adaptations, and I wouldn't say it was here either, but nevertheless, it does. I mean, the most out-of-left-field thing is Chris Pratt as the stereotypical Italian plumber, but maybe moving away from the accent is a good thing? 
who am I to say? But I understand why they'd stick to the lore this time, since Nintendo mostly wants to pretend the live-action movie never happened. I mean, the Super Mario Super Show is a terrible, and the commercial Mario and Luigi make is a clear homage to it, so Nintendo isn't against acknowledging their cringy past. And a John Leguizamo or Samantha Mathis voice cameo would have been amazing, and hopefully they show up in one of the many, many, many sequels this film will have. The initial rumblings were that this movie is boring and by the numbers, which... I guess? It's not easy to set up a brand new world while telling genre-bending, life-altering stories. Obviously, it is done, but as a fun first outing, I think it works really well. If I'm going to complain, I wish that Mario and Luigi weren't split up for most of the movie. I guess it technically follows the feeling of the NES games where you took turns, but I'm pretty sure the point was to let Mario make a new cast of friends and really polish Chris Pratt's star. As a Charlie Day stan, I obviously want more of his Luigi and more of the brothers working together, but it forces us to get to know Anya Taylor-Joy's Peach and Keegan-Michael Key's Toad, who are both fantastic. The entire supporting cast as well really came to play. I loved Donkey Kong, and the nicest thing I can say is that Seth Rogen was not distracting. That sounds like a slight. My point is that he usually is, and this time I just saw DK. The theme and morals are pretty straightforward. Stop the evil, trust your friends, brotherhood is good seemingly another reason to split them up. I think there are plenty of ways to do more compelling stories going forward, but it's clear that this first one was about cramming in a bunch of amazing visuals and references, and in that, they succeeded. Zero complaints. This movie is like a candy-coated nostalgia trip. Jude loves it, Julia loves it, I love it. Margo kept saying, outside, and pointed to the door, so I guess she loved it too. And hopefully it's the start of a well-made franchise. I can't believe I'm asking for another franchise, but hey, it's where we are these days. If you can't get out of it, get into it. Next week, a fighty one.